The internet clearly does not have enough Arduino tutorials, so I decided to make another one. Why should you listen to me? I have a lot of experience teaching students of all ages and introducing them to electronics, so I'm familiar with a lot of the common mistakes that students make. I hope by watching this tutorial, you can get started with Arduino easily and avoid some of those pitfalls. Now, a quick disclaimer, you could easily make an hour-long lecture about this, but this video is going to go pretty fast. This is for people who want to get things working quickly without worrying too much about understanding how everything works. So, this guy says he can teach you Arduino in 15 minutes. Let's see if I can do it in 14. So, real quick, what in the world is an Arduino? It's this little circuit board looking thing. And we could get into a long debate about the differences between computers and microcontrollers and microprocessors. We're not going to worry too much about semantics right now. It is a thingy you can program that connects to circuits. So if you want to build something cool with lots of pretty lights or motors and a moving robot, that sort of thing, an Arduino is a very common way to get started with that type of project. In this tutorial, we are going to use an Arduino simulator that runs in a web browser called Tinkercad Circuits. The nice thing about this is that it's free, so you don't have to spend any money to buy any parts, and you don't have to worry about accidentally blowing anything up. Now, if you've heard of Tinkercad before, it was probably in relation to the CAD or computer-aided design program that a lot of people use for 3D printing. It also has a circuits editor. So if you go to tinkercad.com, create an account and log in, it's going to default to this 3D design section, but go down here, click on circuits, and then click create new circuit. That's going to bring you to the circuit editor. Now, as Tinkercad points out to you, you can go down here to starters and select Arduino circuits, and it has a bunch of nice pre-assembled Arduino circuits that you can use just by clicking and dragging, and it already has the Arduino wired up to a breadboard here. Don't do that. That's cheating. In real life, nobody is going to hand you an Arduino that is already wired. So we are going to do this the hard way and build the circuit from scratch. So let's back up a bit. We're going to ignore that prompt about the starters and go up here and select basic components. So the basic idea is that if you were working in the physical world, you would have a bin of little parts that you would use to build a circuit. Tinkercad lets you select from a menu to add those parts to the circuit editing area over here on the left. So for now, we are going to go ahead and click and drag to add an Arduino Uno R3. This is the most popular version of the Arduino. And we're going to add a breadboard. A breadboard is a thing with a bunch of little holes in it that lets you stick in wires to quickly build and prototype circuits. But the connections are temporary, so you can then easily remove the wires and change your circuit or build something else. Now, as you can see, Tinkercad likes to add these parts in the landscape orientation. I do not like that because then most of the writing is sideways. So when doing this in real life, I like to have these things in portrait orientation. You can do that by selecting the part and then clicking the rotate button up here in the upper left a few times to rotate both parts 90 degrees so they are upright. Now, in general, the first thing you're going to do when building a circuit with an Arduino and a breadboard is connect power to the breadboard. So don't worry if you have no experience with electronics, you are probably still familiar with putting batteries in devices and you know that a battery has a positive and a negative end. In the case of the battery, the positive end is usually marked with a plus, and then the negative end doesn't have anything on it, but you can figure out by process of elimination which end is negative. The Arduino kind of works the same way. It provides power to your circuit. It gets its power from something external, like a USB cable that plugs into your computer, or a wall adapter that plugs into your wall. And then instead of plus and minus, it has pins that are labeled 5 volts and ground. So those are the same as positive and negative, they just use different labels. You see that the breadboard does have the little plus and minus symbols, but the breadboard doesn't have any built-in power or battery of its own. So to get power over to our circuit, we need to connect these 5 volt and ground pins on the Arduino to the breadboard. Again, if you're doing this in the real world, you'll do this with physical wires that you plug into these holes. In Tinkercad, you add wires by clicking. So you click once to start the wire, and then you click once wherever you want the wire to end up. However, what I just did is very bad. I made a wire straight from one point to another, and as I add more wires, that's just going to start getting messy. The wires are going to crisscross each other, and they're both green. So if everything's the same color, it's going to be kind of hard to see what's going on. So I'm going to select to delete both of those, and I'm going to do this a little better. You can click to route the wires around things. So I'm going to route around the Arduino here to get into the positive 
symbol here, and I'm gonna do the same thing for the ground wire to get it over to the negative. And then I am going to change the colors. So there's a little drop down menu up here at the top. In electronics, we usually use black for negative and red for positive. So I've connected my Arduino to these long strips on the breadboard. These are called buses. You see Tinkercad does a nice job highlighting which holes in the breadboard are electrically connected to each other with all these little green circles. So I'm providing power to this part of my breadboard now. Usually when building a better circuit, you also wanna provide power over to the other side. So I'm gonna do that by adding two more wires. Gonna add a black wire connecting the two black buses, change that to black. And then I'm gonna add a red wire connecting the two red buses. So I haven't actually made my circuit do anything yet. This is just your initial setup. Remember, this is basically the same thing that that starter circuit had. So we said you could just go in here and cheat and add this starter circuit and it has all those wires connected for you. But again, if you're doing this in real life, you're gonna have to wire this up yourself. So you might as well practice it in Tinkercad. Okay, great, we have that set up, now what? Let's blink some lights. Again, Arduinos are used for all sorts of cool, multicolored, LED blinky sort of projects. So we are going to go over to the basic components on the right here. We are going to add two things to the circuit, an LED and a resistor. Don't worry too much about the resistor for now. Again, this is one of those details we're gonna gloss over. Long story short, it prevents the LED from blowing up by limiting the amount of current that flows through it. Click on the resistor, change this number to 220, click on this drop-down menu and change that to omega instead of kilo ohms. This is regular ohms. If you don't worry, if you don't remember your metric prefixes, don't worry about it. Now we are gonna put both of these things in the breadboard and connect them to the Arduino. So we can use the Arduino to turn this light on and off. To do that, I'm gonna rotate both of them 90 degrees. I'm gonna move the LED over here. It doesn't matter exactly where you put it as long as it's two legs are in two different rows. Again, how exactly a breadboard works is another one of those things we're kind of glossing over here. I have a more detailed video about that on my channel. We're also gonna rotate this resistor 90 degrees. We're gonna put one end of the resistor in the same row as this straight end of the LED, which is called the cathode. We're gonna put the other end of the resistor in the ground bus, which has this black stripe next to it. So I'm gonna put the resistor right there. Now, this is one of those very common mistakes new students make. If you get this off by one row, it's not gonna work. So this is an open circuit. This row is not connected to this row. Electricity isn't gonna flow between these two points. You gotta make sure the resistor's in the same row as the LED. So the next thing we're gonna do is add a wire from one of the Arduino's digital IO or input output pins to this other side of the LED that isn't connected to anything yet. We're gonna do that with pin 13. You will see why in a minute. So again, I'm gonna click. I'm not gonna go straight point to point. I'm kinda of gonna route the wire nicely. And I'm gonna add this to the same row as that long leg or the anode of the LED. I'm gonna leave this wire red because I have a red LED. If you wanna change the color, you could click the LED. Say, let's change it to blue, actually. I'm gonna change that LED to blue. And I'm also gonna change this wire color to blue. Now, so far we've only built the circuit. We haven't programmed anything. To program the Arduino, we're gonna click on the code menu up here. Again, this is a little different. If you were doing this in person, you would, or sorry, with a physical Arduino, you would open something called the Arduino IDE or Integrated Development Environment on your computer. Tinkercad is nice because it lets me easily show you everything on one screen here. Now, if you're just learning to code and you wanna code with blocks, you can do that. This helps you avoid something called syntax errors where you forget a comma or something and then your program doesn't work but most of the Arduino example code out there is gonna be in text. So we're gonna click this drop-down menu and switch over to text instead of the blocks editor. Hit continue when it gives you this little warning. And now we're gonna have a window where we can edit the code with a normal text editor. So I mentioned earlier that the Arduino is not a computer. It's not running an operating system with a web browser. You don't go check your email. This little program, these 14 lines of code are all that are gonna be running on it here. So don't worry if you don't have any programming experience. If you look at this, it might be a little intimidating with the curly brackets and words like void. You're wondering what that means. We're just gonna look at kind of the human readable part of this code and step through it line by line. So first we have something called setup. This is code that just happens once. When you first turn the Arduino on, these are the initial instructions it gets. That only happens one time. So when it first turns on, it's gonna run this line of code. Pin mode 13 output. That is telling the Arduino to set pin 13, the one we have a wire connected to, as an output. 
Remember, these are digital input or output pins. You can decide whether they're used as inputs or outputs. So that only needs to happen once. You tell the Arduino pin 13 is gonna be an output. Then it moves on to the loop. This is code that just repeats forever. Remember, the microcontroller is not doing anything else. It's not running any other programs. It's just gonna do this until the power dies or you yank the battery or something. And in that loop, what it's doing, digital write 13 high. That is telling the Arduino, turn pin 13 on. Then delay 1000. This is measuring time in milliseconds or thousandths of a second. So that is gonna wait for a second. Then digital write 13 low. That says turn this pin off. That turns the LED off. Then we wait for another second and then we just repeat that forever. So all this is going to do is blink that LED on and off one second at a time. We can watch that happen by clicking the start simulation button. If you've wired the LED properly and you didn't mess up anything on the breadboard, you should just see the LED blink on and off. So I have been talking for 11 minutes. Now it is your turn. Using everything you have learned so far, try to add a second LED to your circuit and make it blink at the same time as the first one. You can do this just by copying and pasting lines of code and changing the pin number to correspond to the pin you've connected the LED to. You shouldn't need to write any new code from scratch. Pause the video here and give it a shot. All right, hopefully you did pause the video and tried to figure this out yourself before looking ahead for the solution. You can see I have added a second LED here, wired exactly the same way the first one was, except I have connected it to pin 12. All I then needed to do in the code is copy and paste the lines for pin 13 and change the 13 to a 12. So I set pin 12 as an output, then I am going to turn pin 12 on, wait a second, and turn pin 12 off the same time I turn pin 13 off. Now, so far we have only talked about outputs. What if you want to use an input, like a machine that reacts when somebody presses a button or a robot that avoids crashing into walls? The simplest input you can use with an Arduino is a push button. We are going to add a button to our circuit, rotate it 90 degrees, and connect it here to the middle of the breadboard. Now, to wire that button to the Arduino, we're going to add three things. We're going to connect one side of the button to Arduino pin 7. We're going to connect the other side of the button to the breadboard positive bus, and finally, we're going to add something called a pull-down resistor. This connects the top part of the button to the breadboard ground bus. If, with physical circuits, this would typically have a value of 10 kilo ohms, so click on the resistor and change this number to 10. To make the button work, we're going to make some changes to the code. We're going to add a line telling the Arduino to use pin 7 as an input, and then we're going to use an if statement with the digital read command. This reads whether this pin is high or low, meaning whether the button is pressed or released. If the button is pressed, it's gonna turn the LEDs on. If the button is released, it's gonna turn the LEDs off. We can see that if we start the simulation, the LEDs turn on when we click the button. Now, I won't give away the answer, but for a challenge here, try adding a second button, one to control each LED. And there you have it, Arduino in less than 14 minutes. Again, we glossed over a lot of the details, but the basics you learned in this video will help you move on to more advanced projects like all those cool blinky lights or robotics projects with motors and sensors. If you have a question, please go ahead and leave a comment below this video. If you'd like to learn more about electronics and Arduino, please check out the other videos listed here on the end screen. Thanks for watching.